Okay. I read on the mayor's website last week that Colorado Springs is one of the top 20 cities in the United States for entrepreneurial women. Our presenter today is Susan Edmondson, CEO of the Downtown Partnership of Colorado Springs. Susan certainly looks and feels to me to be a most entrepreneurial woman, a true pearl of wit and wisdom in every sense of the word. And we are so delighted to have her speak to us today. Susan, born in Bakersfield, California, holds a bachelor's degree in journalism from Cal Poly, located in San Luis Obispo, one of the most beautiful and memorable cities in Central California. She holds a master's degree in public administration from UCCS, located in Colorado Springs, one of the most beautiful and memorable cities in Colorado. <laughs> Actually, Susan also taught strategic nonprofit communication in the School of Public Affairs at UCCS. She serves on the boards of Colorado Springs World Arena and the Colorado Springs Pioneer Museum and is co founder of, do I say C O P P E R? Just Copper. Just Copper, the cultural office of the Pikes Peak region. Her efficient and picturesque office is in the Plaza of the Rockies building, and I can personally say she has an excellent and most efficient staff to facilitate all the many projects and events taking place in cosmopolitan downtown Colorado <laughs> Springs. Susan is a multitasking single woman who enjoys cooking, hiking, and of course, theater and art openings. Susan says she has very few hobbies because she works too much, but she has a vision of Colorado Springs becoming a world-class downtown, and it appears that she is on her way to making it just that. Pillar is proud to present to you today, Ms. Susan Edmondson. Thank you. That may have been the best introduction I've ever received. That was, that was lovely. Thank you. And it's, it's great to see so many folks here and many people that I, that I know as well. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to start off with a little video about downtown. I suspect and I hope many of you are longtime downtown patrons. But I'm hoping with this video you might see a little different side to downtown than you've seen before.
I hope you saw some familiar places and places that you love in that video. And I, I hope you also saw some new places because we've had a lot of great new uh, businesses opening up and a lot of things going on downtown. So um, I'm just going to share with you a little bit about um, downtown, which I'm sure with many of you, much of this you may already know, um, but a little bit about where we're headed and a little bit about downtown partnership itself and how it's uh, how it's structured. But I do want to leave a lot of time for questions. So um, as you think of questions, you might want to write them down or, or something so you don't forget them because I, I really want this to be a, a little bit uh, more of a dialogue. And um, so you probably thought you were going to hear about downtown today, but uh, uh, I just thought I would share with you this piece of art. Does anyone recognize this work or know this artist? Um, and many of you know I sort of have a background as an art lover as well. Um, this is a piece by an artist called Giotto. Um, and what he's sort of most famous for is kind of considered to be the first artist of the Renaissance. And the reason I like to share this image is more from this idea. We've been talking about a, a downtown Renaissance for for many years. And uh, I think uh, this idea of like, how do you know when you're in a renaissance? Do you just wake up one day and, and everything's different? Did he just wake up one day and say, we have a whole new way of thinking about art and culture and man in, in the universe and now we're in a renaissance. Um, so for us at downtown, we've been talking about a renaissance for the past several years. And this idea of like, are we there yet? I think there's two things that, um, occur you know to let you know that you're in a renaissance and i think the first is a change in attitude and in the past several years we've been seeing a different sort of attitude around the value of a downtown in a city that whether or not you live or work in a downtown how important it is for your whole city to have a thriving heart and i think in the past maybe the past several years we sort of played lip service to that but now I think we're embracing it at a whole other level. Um, we're also seeing, as we often talk about, that Colorado Springs is struggling to attract and retain young professionals. And we know uh, the millennial generation in particular really wants to live in a thriving downtown urban area um, and how important that's going to be for the future of our city and our economy. Um, and then the second is this idea of you have a change in attitude, you also then need a change in action. And again, um, while we've talked about the importance of our downtown for many years, it takes the action both at a political leadership level as well as private businesses to say, I believe in downtown, I'm investing in downtown. Um, and we see that when a place like the Wyndham Hotel, the mining exchange, gets built and when other small businesses um, come together and when our elected leaders say we need to pay attention to downtown. So for me, after talking about a renaissance for so many years, I feel pretty confident that we are, we are actually in it right now. So I've been with Downtown Partnership for really just about a year. Um, and it has been such a fun and exciting year for me. So I want to share a little bit about the partnership and how it operates and then uh, talk a little bit more about where we're headed with downtown. We are a nonprofit organization and we work to ensure that downtown Colorado Springs serves as the economic, civic, and cultural heart of our city. Um, a lot of times people ask me, well, what do you mean when you say downtown? Because there's a lot of different ways to think about what downtown means. Um, I just kind of have this map here because it also shows two of our taxing districts, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, in general, when I think about downtown, we mostly do our work and function in the areas with Colorado College to the north, um, I-25 to the west, mostly Wasatch to the east and a little bit of a node around that, and then kind of south to the railroad tracks. So in terms of our work and, if you will, our service area, that's kind of the area we focus on. But I know um, to our community, downtown often means more than that. For me, I live in Shook's Run. So when I meet people, I usually say I live downtown because that's what they think of. So whether you're in Patty Jewett neighborhood or the Old North End, um, Mill Street neighborhood, a lot of folks absolutely see themselves as, as part of downtown in, in the larger picture. And I, I think that's pretty important too because um, as we make the case for downtown, um, I often like to remind people, you know, we are, as we know, a very sort of large, sprawling city. 
We're a city of 196 square miles. So downtown is really only about 1% of the land mass of our city. But even though we're only maybe 1, 1.5% 1 of our, our city land mass in terms of our workforce, the sales tax that's generated just within that area, we far greatly represent something larger than just that small uh, geographic area. So a little bit of the organizational details before I get to some of the fun stuff. Um, as I mentioned, Downtown Partnership, we are a nonprofit organization. We're a membership organization. Anyone can be a member. You're all welcome to become members today. Uh, you don't have to be a downtown business or, or live downtown to be a member. So we have businesses like USAA and Kaiser Permanente who are, are you know, business leaders in the community, but they know downtown's important for their business, even though their business isn't located downtown. So um, they've been members for years, as well as, of course, a lot of the uh, small businesses and individuals downtown. Um, we do a lot of advocacy to ensure that downtown is, is served um, at a, at a you know, proper level within our city government, um, making sure that it's safe, uh, that we have some transportation and access, um, more and more sustainability issues in terms of how we can um, properly build um, in a manner that's uh, conducive to the environment and our future. A lot of these different kind of areas that we focus on um, at the partnership. Partnership kind of has its roots back uh, in the city to you may remember an organization called the Downtowners, um, as well as uh, for a while then it was the Downtown Colorado Springs Inc. Inc. Um, so a lot of different things that came before Downtown Partnership itself. Um, really, it kind of its roots kind of started as mostly like a merchant association, and helped to plan a lot of events to bring people downtown. Many of you might remember the bed races and and some of those things that happened downtown many years ago. So it ha does have a long history, even though the name is different. It's sort of evolved and morphed uh, through the years. But we also then. Um, through Downtown Partnership, we are all one staff, but we manage the work of a few other entities as well. So to me, I don't really care when I'm out in the community, I talk about downtown. Um, but in the sense of we actually have four different boards, four different legal organizations, because they all serve different functions to support the needs of downtown. So as I mentioned, we do have two taxing districts. Um, so those have very defined boundaries. They're created literally by a vote of the people within those boundaries. So the business owners and property owners voted in that area to tax themselves to provide services to support downtown. So it's not money from the city general fund or whatever, it's those businesses that say, we wanna pay a little bit more for these functions. Um, so our business improvement district, we focus primarily on two things, um, public space management, streetscapes. So that is keeping the sidewalks clean, power washing, um, snow removal, planting the flowers in the flower beds, all those beautiful flower pots, making downtown feel beautiful, safe, and welcome really at the pedestrian level. And then we also have a lot of marketing functions in that. Um, as you, of course, know, downtown is full of lots of locally owned mom and pop shops. And those are really small businesses that often can't do the kind of marketing on a larger scale that, say, a big box chain can do. So we really are there to support them in many ways, support the kinds of events that bring all the community downtown and, and sort of let the whole world know about good things that are going on downtown. Then there's another um, district called the Downtown Development Authority. That's relatively new. It's been around six or seven years. Its primary focus is economic development, which can be done in a variety of ways. We even, through this, um, this uh, district, provide grants, not just to nonprofits, but also to small businesses. So things like um, historic preservation, facade improvements on buildings, so that again, those buildings can be brought up to their best level for the look and feel of downtown, and that we can you know, fill some of the vacancies and, and keep downtown vibrant. We also provide some funding to special events as well. Um, one in particular uh, that's rather notable, the USA Pro Cycling event that uh, came to Colorado Springs a few years ago, whole statewide bike race. Um, I think it's pretty safe to say without the funding that DDA provided to that event, we probably wouldn't have secured it for Colorado Springs. Um, it is coming back again this year, by the way, uh, August 21st. It's going to be super fun. Uh, if you haven't been, I highly recommend it. It's just 
really wild, and it's a very cool event, not just for Colorado Springs, but for the whole state. Um, and I will say DDA, in its handful of years since it's been around, has provided over a million and a half dollars um, in grants, again, for events, for helping small businesses with renovations, those kinds of things. And then finally, we also have this nonprofit arm, Community Ventures. You probably know and love them best as the folks who do the Art on the Streets public art program, which is such a wonderful, beloved program. Um, it is now coming into its 16th year downtown. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But as well as other special events that really help, um, you know, bring people downtown and make downtown the sort of center of celebrations for the community. So things like, um, Last year when we had ice skating in Acacia Park and those kinds of things, those we do through our, our nonprofit arm of Community Ventures. So a lot of different entities, but all working towards that same goal of keeping downtown thriving and, and vibrant. So what guides us in what we do? Uh, just kind of a couple headlines around that. Uh, we did some market research last year to learn a little bit more about what people think of downtown. and. Uh, when we ask people, not just downtown, but from all over the city, what do you think of when you think of downtown? There are basically three things that, that come to mind with folks. One is our great historic architecture, that we are the center of how our city grew and was founded, and the beautiful buildings that we have. Um, another is arts and culture. Uh, we are the hub for most of our major cultural attractions um, right in our downtown. And then the third, again, is that unique retail, you know, the kinds of things that you can get in the stores uh, downtown that you can't find anywhere else. And, and that sort of personal service you get from a mom and pop shop that knows you by name and, and helps you out. So those are the things we really want to build on. Those are our real strengths that we look every day to support and enhance um, that are so important for, for our downtown. Another thing that guides us more and more, and this is a little bit newer uh, concept, is you know, our city is really starting to understand that our strength nationally, internationally, is really our brand of health and wellness and fitness and the great outdoors. Um, and I think our downtown also embodies that brand, if you will, and more and more will continue to embody that brand. Um, some, of the, some of the things are obvious, some are, are less obvious in this, but we know downtown is the home for the U.S. Olympic Committee headquarters, which is very exciting, as well as many of the national governing bodies. But in many other ways, things we don't think about our retail, we have so much retail downtown that is focused on health, wellness, and fitness. Places like Mountain Chalet and Runner's Roost, Title IX, Lululemon, a lot of those retails where you can get your clothing and your gear to be outside. Places like City Rock Climbing Gym, you know, not a lot of cities and downtowns have this major climbing gym in the heart of their city. And then again, the events that we have downtown that are often very sort of outdoors and fitness oriented. Um, marathons, 5Ks, half marathons, a lot of things like that. Um, this is from a, a Super Bowl a, a half day marathon. Um, and many of you might know the Jack Quinn's Running Club. Jack Quinn's Running Club is every Tuesday night of the year uh, downtown. They get over 1,500 people every single Tuesday night running downtown. In the summer, it gets close to 2,000 people. Uh, my office kind of looks out over Jack Quinn's, and so every Tuesday night, it's amazing just the number of people with strollers and their dogs. And, um, you know, when it was Mardi Gras, they were all running in beads and stuff. So it's just, you know, another kind of thing that makes us unique and special that I really love. So you're going to see more and more um, with downtown how we um, – embrace our sort of health, wellness, and fitness, and that's something that can set us apart from other cities. You know, cities are really looking, you know, what makes you special and attractive to others and sets you apart, and I think we could be this very sort of lively urban environment that also embraces the great outdoors. So this idea of creating opportunity. Um, this is something I've been focusing a lot in this past year as I've been new on the job at Downtown Partnership. Um, and we've even added a new position to our staff that really is focused in this area. Um, we know there are a lot of rewards to having your business downtown, 
But there can also be challenges to locating a business downtown. It is very difficult to get through permitting processes, entitlements, licensing, all those kinds of things to locate downtown. We're an older era. We have aging infrastructure. It makes it very hard. You may be a small business person who what you want more than anything is to open your restaurant or your tap room or to sell some great little you know boutique product um and yet you've got to go through all these other hurdles to get your business uh uh get the door open if you will on your business so we're working hard with folks both existing businesses as they look to expand as well as new businesses coming in downtown to get with them very early on and help them through these hurdles because it can be very tough parking all those kinds of issues to make sure that businesses can be successful um, so that's something we are, are really beefing up, I would say, is helping businesses get through those kinds of processes more effectively. This is another one that sometimes people get a little confused when I talk about this concept of choosing streetscape versus skyline. And what I mean by that is I am a fan of great architecture, and I want us also, as we build new within downtown, um, to have beautiful buildings and really um, spectacular architecture. But what's always important to remember is you've got to start at the street level. What makes downtowns important is that it brings people together at the street levels. The streets have to be beautiful and safe and welcoming. It's the sidewalk cafes where you walk down the street and you run into your friend and have a conversation. That's why people love downtowns. That's what makes them different from a strip mall or, or somewhere else. So when how we design and how we make our downtown accessible, We've always got to start at that street level before you think about a 30-story building way up here. It's got to be how we all connect uh, right on the street as pedestrians, as bicyclists. So that's a very important to me that we always kind of keep that in mind. Does this event look familiar to anyone? Um, this idea of being creative and being uniquely us. I'm a big fan of big practices. I've been doing a lot of studying of what is making other downtowns successful all across the city, and there's a lot we can learn. But we will always be who we are and uniquely us, and I don't want to be anything else. I can look at Denver and see some good things they're doing and maybe learn from that, but I don't want to be Denver. I don't want to be Fort Collins. I don't want to be any other city but who we are. Um, so I like this picture in particular because I think it, it says a lot about who we are. That's America the Beautiful Park, which is such a great asset to downtown. Um, anyone know what this event is? It's a relatively new event. It's the Waldo Waldo, yeah. Um, this was a 5K running event. It started just two years ago after the Waldo Canyon fire. So it was started as a fundraiser to support the efforts after the fire. Um, all grassrootsy folks who just came together wanted to do something in the community. Um, and so the twist, of course, is everyone dresses as Where's Waldo. What's also kind of fun is the company that has the patent on those costumes is a Colorado Springs company. So it was a great way to work together with that local company. Uh, so it was just a great way for, again, people to come together, be outdoors, be in our city, um, 5K run, so very accessible no matter what someone's level of, of running or fitness is. Um, and it was so great that they decided to make it an annual event. They did it again last year. Um, they're looking to break the world record for most number of Waldos in one place. Didn't quite do it last year, even though there were over 2,000, almost 2,500 of us there. Um, but again, these are the kinds of things that I think build community and are a little bit special and unique. And now I hear somewhere in Kansas, like Kansas City or something, now they're doing a Waldo running event. They even stole our pictures from Colorado to start promoting the event. So, you know, we claim it, but we got to make sure that it stays ours. So everything we do, we want to be about who we are and not pretend to be something, something else or something that we're not. So um, we love to plan in our city. We have a lot, a lot of plans, and many of them are very good and very helpful. Um, but I think you know, we're at a real transition point for our city. We've done a lot of research. We've done a lot of planning. And, and I think now it's time to get down to a bit of doing. Um, so I'm kind of excited when I tell people we're not, we still are thoughtful and strategic about what we do, but we're not looking to have another five years of, of big studies on things. I think we got enough information that we know um, where we need to go and how to move forward. Um, so I do want to talk about one plan that has been guiding us the past few years with downtown that's very helpful. We have a few things that guide us. We have the Imagine Downtown plan. That's been around about seven years. 
it was a really thoughtful process, involved hundreds of people providing feedback and got us a lot of good information. That continues to guide what we do. And then two years ago as well, the Urban Ant Land Institute came to town. For those of you who aren't familiar, ULI is a really respected organization made up of architects, urban planners, mayors of cities, all sorts of folks who know um, about land use and design and, and uh, supporting great cities. So a group of them came here for a week, uh, visited our downtown, again talked to scores of people to get their feedback, and issued a report in late 2012 with some recommendations for downtown. So some of what they have recommended is also guiding us uh, into our future with what we do. So I want to share a few of the sort of highlights of their recommendations um, that I think are pretty exciting. So one of them is our water. You know, downtown is at the confluence of uh, Monument and Fountain Creeks, and, and yet we turn our backs to it. We are not oriented towards our water. Um, many cities find that when they orient towards their water, how great that can be for the community, for tourism, that active kind of lifestyle again to be at the cafe on the creek or whatever. So we have this great asset in our community that sometimes we just throw junk in or we got to maintain the trails around it. And they're saying, you need to pay more attention to your water because that's a really great asset that you have. We don't have a lot of water in Colorado, so we got to really sort of leverage it when we have it there. We'll talk a little bit more about um, some of the efforts underfoot, um, but this was a really strong recommendation of theirs. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I uh, uh, went to Oklahoma City, and uh, they are one of the many cities that, again, have had projects to sort of enhance their waterways. But they pointed out the river through their, their city, through their downtown area, um, and it now has become a site for Olympic rowing events and competitions. But essentially, their river um, really was almost like a ditch, and they said we had to mow the river three times a year. And yet they could see potential in this just sort of vast expanse of weeds and such and turn it into something great for their city. So I know, I know we can do that too. Residential. Um, to have a thriving downtown, you need people living in it 24-7. This is an area I will confess we are pretty behind on downtown. Um, not just uh, in the sense of sometimes we think only the big cities have downtown residential, but you can look at a lot of cities our size and smaller, the sort of small, mid-sized cities. It could be Wichita, Kansas, or Chattanooga, Tennessee. Residential is, is really taking off. Um, again, little challenges, hurdles to development like you would have in any downtown. It's a lot cheaper to build an apartment complex way out in the sprawling suburbs than it is downtown. Um, but we are committed to this and really working to um, make it possible, make it affordable. Um, there is a little bit of residential downtown. Price points are prohibitive for most people. We want it to be so that everything from young professionals to sort of retiring baby boomers and beyond can be downtown. And, um, and you know, then you can just walk right outside from your apartment and go get a cup of coffee, go to an event at the Pikes Peak Center, go to the library. Um, so there are some things afoot. I think we're really going to start moving the needle on residential. But until you get people living in your downtown, that's that one piece that really kind of is catalytic. You know, I always sort of um, talk about with downtown, I always say, you know, there really is no silver bullet for downtown. And the silver bullet is residential. So very, very important. And then a third recommendation from the Urban Land Institute um, wasn't specifically City for Champions, but how it has morphed into that, I'll explain a little bit. You know, ULI was here, and one of the things they really were impressed by was um, America the Beautiful Park, such a great relatively new asset to our downtown. Festivals and events take place there. Um, it's a really great community gathering space, but it's on the edge of some railroad tracks and a bunch of blight, and it's also a little bit tough to access. There's not a lot of parking there, not really great pedestrian bike access from the Colorado Avenue Bridge. It's like this really great asset that we're not fully leveraging. So what ULI said is you need to enhance access to that park, and this is where you should put your sort of destination assets, museums and those kinds of things that draw people, not just in your community, from all over. So that was the recommendation um, that they made for that area, and then that since became 
this project known as City for Champions that has some downtown components as well as com components all over the community. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, but as I think you know, what's planned for that area are, are two things, a downtown stadium and events center, and then a U.S. Olympic Museum. Um, we know uh, we should be of all cities in the country, the place to, to be for an Olympic Museum, it only makes sense. It is the kind of attraction that can bring people from all over the country as well as the world. And I think it's something that's very suitable for our city to, uh, to sort of celebrate the Olympic mov movement in such a manner. So all those kinds of ULI recommendations, those are things that will take many years and we are deep in planning processes, a lot of good things going on with them, but we're not going to get a shovel in the ground tomorrow on them. So it's important for me that we always show folks the continuing progress we're making daily. So I want to share a bit about some of the things that are happening right now where you're going to see the difference now or sometime this year so that you know we're always uh, moving forward both short term and long term. So I want to kind of go back to America the Beautiful Park, you know, when we talked about our our water and how important that is. There is a great group of people um, organized as a sort of nonprofit fund, um, gone through various names. We're now calling it the Legacy Loop. You may know it as um, uh, the Emerald Necklace. For many years, we've called it the Emerald Necklace. It's essentially the trail system that encircles the greater downtown area. So you have the sort of Pikes Peak Greenway Trail. That's the trail with Monument Valley Park and around there. Shook's Run, kind of to the east, that really is designed to be a complete circle, but there are components to that trail that don't quite match up yet. Um, they're working very hard to have that trail completed um, and also better access to it. So when we have this trail encircling downtown, how it will then also connect within downtown and make it safe for um, all sorts of events. There are a lot of 5K and 10K events that we could host on this trail if it weren't for a few places where you have to cross a busy street. So they're looking at a few of those places where you could tunnel under, um, as well as a few places that need connecting on this trail, that, so through easements and some other things, so we could have this really great system around our downtown. But one of the things they're working on that we do have funding from Great Outdoors Colorado for is, again, how do we connect to our water? And so we have this great park with America's Beautiful Park, but the way it's designed, there's sort of a berm, and the creek's right there, but you don't really access the creek. So this year, they're already in the design phase and working hard on this. There will be an area they call Creekside that will make the park accessible to the water and have a lot of sort of environmental learning activities for kids and families and educate children about the importance of water in our community. And again, create more opportunity with that park to also involve our water. So that's something that's already got funding and is already um, in the planning stages that you'll be seeing more of soon. So did you know that um, downtown Colorado Springs is a creative district candidate with the state of Colorado? Um, this is something that I find really exciting that um, both validates a lot of what we've been doing downtown and also sort of encourages us to enhance our arts and culture moving forward. Um, so this is a relatively new program of the state of Colorado. It was created through a bill in the legislature a few years ago. And what the state was saying is they know that arts and culture are a real economic driver for cities. And they uh, created a program that was very competitive. Small towns, big cities um, from across the state had to do a rigorous application process to receive some level of certification as a creative district in the state of Colorado. Um, so downtown applied and um, received a certain sort of level of designation. Um, that was that first year in 2012, so really just two years ago that this got started. Uh, a few communities are now what's known as fully certified. So what does that all mean? Well, there's a little bit of funding that comes with that, but it's, it's much more in the sense of that sort of validation of saying at a state and even a national level, these are communities that have it going on with arts and culture. You're going to want to visit there. You should check them out. Um, so some of the other things that come with that designation, for example, 
transportation uh, signage on the highway. How great would it be to drive down I-25 and see a sign that said downtown Colorado Springs, a state creative district? Just as when you're driving all over the state and you see a sign like that in a community like Salida that you might not never know had all these great arts and cultural offerings going on. So um, we are in the process of applying for full certification. As I mentioned, it's very rigorous. But what the state looks at is not just the activities we have in our downtown, and we have a lot of them, but it's really this idea of how do you ingrain arts and culture into your planning processes with your community. For example, if you have safety issues in a park, um, bringing arts and cultural activities can make the park safer. All these kinds of ways you can use arts and culture to enhance your community. So some of the things we've been doing, as I mentioned, of course we have our Art on the Streets um, program that's so successful, but we've really enhanced that program this year with walking tours. We've created a whole new series of walking tours we call Core Culture, and they are second Saturdays of the month, and three different tours. One is a tour of our Art on the Streets public art program, one is a tour that lets you know about the history of our community through the public art, the bronze sculptures of many of our city's founders and key leaders in our city. And then the third tour is a tour of our historic architecture. Um, so really fun activities on a Saturday morning um, where we meet at a coffee shop. It's a $10 tour, but that includes a coffee drink and then a guided walking tour of downtown. Um, that, again, speaks to that idea of the, the human pedestrian level. And we love when we bring people downtown for these walking tours. We're finding the zip codes. They're coming from all over the city. And, uh, but then they discover, a little again, a mom-and-pop shop or something. They say, oh, I had no idea this was here. And, and that's what we hope happens with that, too. One of the other things that we launched last year, that photo you see on the left, a um, woman playing a taiko drum, uh, we launched a new program called Sidewalk Stage, and that is bringing street performances right out to the streets of downtown. And again, it's this idea of how you can use arts and culture to um, solve city issues or en enhance the uh, strengths that you want to enhance. Uh, for us, this program was important to make downtown safer and more vibrant. When you have a fun activity like this on the streets, people congregate, you feel safer on the street because there's lots of people. It's also that idea of sort of surprise and delight that you're there for who knows what activity and you turn the corner and something great's going on and hopefully that kind of thing makes you want to come back more often. Um, that particular moment there with this whole drumming group was uh, at the corner of uh, Pikes Peak and Tahone downtown and uh, someone shared like a eight minute or eight minute eight second video of this group on Facebook as that was happening and what was so funny is I just sort of watched on Facebook where um, it got shared um, scores of time with other people but like all the comments were like oh I was just there this was so cool or where is this I want to go and I love Colorado Springs or whatever so it really kind of creates some excitement so a lot that we're going to be doing to continue to support and enhance um, our creative activities downtown certainly Fine Arts Center, Pioneers Museum, um, uh, Pikes Peak Center, the conservatory is now located downtown, Cottonwood Center for the Arts we have great First Friday um, art opening scene going on it was First Friday just last week and downtown was actually packed even though it was that crazy spring snow People still came out for arts and culture, so something we will continue to work on, and hopefully this year we'll have good news um, on that. So did any of you ice skate during uh, the holidays? Sean did, yay, if you did. Um, this was something new for us as well. We brought six weeks of ice skating on real ice to Acacia Park. We know, again, Acacia Park has some challenges. This is kind of how you mitigate those challenges. When we brought a positive activity in partnership with our parks department, of course, to Acacia Park, many of the negative activities went away. Um, so this was a huge success. People of all ages, um, families, it was great for grandparents to bring their grandkids, people visiting for the holidays. It was a great way to get the relatives out of the house, <laughs> you know, uh, go, go ice skating, date night. Um, we had a, a just short of 10,000 people ice skate this first year, um, so I'm happy to say it will be back again this next year. Um, and of course, we're always looking for that sort of win-win-win situation. It was a win because it was a great community event. It was a win because it made our parks safer and more vibrant. And it was a win because people then also bought a cup of hot chocolate in a local store, went Christmas shopping in a local store, 
a lot of stores that were new said, you know, people came downtown to skate, didn't even know we existed and have discovered us and have come back since then. So um, for us, that's something that we're really excited to keep continuing as well. What's also ahead? Cimarron I-25 Interchange. That place is a mess, isn't it? <laughs> um, someone said the other day, and they were not joking, plans to improve that interchange have been around since the Nixon administration. <laughs> but what's exciting is last year this was green lighted by the state as a high priority um, project. I know you may have seen recently in the Gazette there's a slight little financial gap. I will say I'm not concerned it is moving forward. Um, it will be completed by December 2017. Uh, that may seem far away, but in the scheme of things, after about 30 years and the complexity of a project like this, this is a $95 million project. It is already in the planning and uh, design stage. In fact, the, the RFPs for designers on this is going out later this spring. Obviously, it's a very complex project. There will be a little bit of pain when it happens. There always is in construction. Uh, but this is really a gateway to our city. And, uh, you know, it's not a gateway we're very proud of right now. It's kind of a mess. It's also a gateway to Teller County, too. So I think it's so important for our whole region that we um, get this done, get it done right, and also make sure that it's aesthetically pleasing, I think is so important. Um, you know, what's kind of interesting, too, with the planning on this interchange, obviously making it right for the cars, but this is in a very important place in terms of the creeks and trails below. So many people use bikers and um, hikers or, or walkers use the trails directly below that. So what's great is the design process is such that we're really paying attention to that lower area. We're normally at an interchange, you wouldn't really even think about that, but we want to make sure that it only enhances people's ability to bike and hike and walk and connect with our community in that lower area and that it's designed well. So again, um, you're not gonna see this tomorrow, but it is really happening. It's not just being talked about and it's pretty important. Um, you know, it's really exciting in December of last year that that was the month that the, the state funding for City for Champions was announced, but it was also a month when a lot of what I sort of call beloved local brands announced that they're coming downtown. These are just a few of them, but um, they're ones that excite me because they're already well-known and well-loved by people. Um, Coquette's was a restaurant in Manitou Springs. They are moving downtown. In fact, they'll be open in about two weeks downtown. Um, Ranch Foods Direct, many of you probably know them, a great, um, more than just a butcher and a meat provider, really um, sustainable practices, ethical practices. They supply a lot of the meat to a lot of um, restaurants downtown. They're moving their entire facility to downtown. Um, some of you uh, may not be as familiar with Bingo Burger. They're actually out of Pueblo. I know it's just a burger joint. You think it's just a burger joint? Oh my gosh really amazing, super delicious. So, so again, when these folks in Pueblo said, we're ready for our next location, that's what they wanted was uh, downtown Colorado Springs. So these are businesses that we work with behind the scenes very closely to help them locate and be successful downtown. And, and again, because these are already known and already sort of have a strong uh, fan base, uh, it's very encouraging to me. So, you know, when you look at all these things that are either in process, in construction process, or announced last year and we'll be moving forward in the next um, several years, we really turned the corner last year in terms of people investing in downtown, both at a public and a private level, um, really to the tune of over a third of a billion dollars in investment in our downtown. Much of that is City for Champions, but not all of that. It's also the Cimarron I-25 interchange. A and B Bank is building a new building. Um, what used to be Bank at Broadmoor, now North Star Bank, constructing a new building. Ranch Foods Direct, their building. Pikes Peak Community College announced um, $20 million investment in their downtown campus. Most of their sort of creative majors and ind creative industry majors will be located downtown. So Pikes Peak Community College, they found that downtown is an important place for them, as well as their students always saying, I want, you know, when are you going to offer that course downtown? I want to take it when it's downtown, partly because of the public transportation. 
Uh, so some of this is already in construction phase and, and obviously some of this is more complex and, and on down the line. Um, but these are the kinds of things you need to see to be able to move the needle on, again, some of those long time vacancies, give people a little bit of a vision for the future so that they have some confidence that if they're going to take a risk in doing something downtown that they see that it's headed somewhere. Um, we've seen this very much in Denver as far as, you know, these kinds of catalytic efforts. If you haven't seen what's going on with Union Station downtown, it's absolutely amazing what's going on um, in Denver at that level. So to me, this shows people have confidence in downtown's future, um, which is very encouraging. So, you know, what do we hope when all these things happen? Um, sales tax revenue goes up not just for our downtown, but for our whole city. When our downtown is strong, that provides the revenue that supports all the things that our city government needs to uh, do each day in terms of police and fire and roads. Our property values go up, again, not just in our downtown core, but all the neighborhoods surrounding downtown, how it can strengthen them. Tourism certainly uh, goes up. We want to uh, uh, be a community that, that attracts others. And of course, we like tourism because those are people who come for a few days, spend their money, and then leave. And that's economically, those are good dollars. You like those kind of dollars. Um, what else goes up? Um, I say health, and sometimes people say, well, why do you say that? And downtowns are walkable, they're bikeable. It's, again, that human scale. And um, absolutely, there's so many studies that show when you have that kind of urban environment that um, people live healthier lifestyles because it's easy to bike and walk instead of getting in a car and go everywhere. For me, obviously, the excitement around fun and civic engagement when you bring people together for uh, activities. This was the Olympic downtown celebration and it had a, a fun run associated with it um, and how important that is. And then even this idea of innovation. Um, there's a lot of studies that also look at innovation and entrepreneurship and, and what it takes to create a culture for that. And uh, one of it really is this idea of density, that when people are near each other, be it like in a coffee shop or ways that they can connect and talk, that's how innovation happens. It doesn't happen by being isolated and alone. Um, we are finding more and more businesses that want to be downtown for that very reason, that they need to brainstorm or they want to connect with a sort of a peer that then they can say, let's meet over a beer, let's go out for a cup of coffee, and they can easily do that. So um, again, a lot of downtowns, not just ours, are really looking at how a downtown can be a center of, of innovation. So these are the kinds of things we think are happening that we want to keep seeing happening at a whole other uh, greater level. So. What I like to think about with um, downtown that sort of guides us as well is, is this idea of it's a place that matters in the world and that you can matter in that. And by that I mean I want our, our state and our region and everyone to see that we got a great downtown, but I want to make it a place where everybody can find their opportunity in it. Whether it's a place they love to just take a run and have a beer with friends on a Tuesday night or start their business or whatever it is that someone can find their way to sort of fit in downtown and be successful. So that's what guides us every day. Mm -hmm.